So the purposes of the wilderness are extracting resources like lumber, um, minerals from mine, which were recreated. So a pretty good portion of the people in the city um, realize that their, their needs for, for stimulation are being met. So they get in their cars and they drive out to the wilderness every weekend. And you're not to go fishing, to go hunting, to, to camp, to hike, whatever. Um, so yeah, all those systems are separate in our society. Um, they have to be connected by the networks I was talking about earlier. And it takes a lot of energy. Um, this illustration could be anywhere. This looks just like a Caldwell Valley. We can see some of the problems that were brought up by, by the disintegration. We've got to have these road networks so you can, you know, if you're a farmer, you, you take your crops to the city and then they send you back cash so you can drive back to the city and buy stuff with that cash that was made from stuff that other people grew in the country. Roads are a way to get goods out of the countryside and get, in, get them into cities where they can be consumed, wasted, and, you know, and sent to, to the dump or you know, flush down the street. Um, the interstate highway system was not created so you could visit your Uncle Larry in Seattle. Um, it was created to, to bring in resources off rural lands and, uh, and also to move warheads around, actually, for, for that sort of thing. Um, this illustration is so packed full of problems, uh, we could spend all day talking about it. Um, you know, we've got cultivated land that's losing soil to erosion. We've got center pivot irrigation that's draining the aquifer and, and you know, losing soil to salinization, also erosion. Um, that wouldn't be such a big deal if maybe this river wasn't eroding and the water table was dropping. This river was vegetated. Um, then, then the water table could be up where it needs to be. Um, got a dog hair thicket. You know, we always we, we, we tend to assume that forest is better than non-forest. Um, but what what timber managers are doing is is packing in their production as tightly as they can. So they want as many trees and as little time as possible. And we're creating these dog hair thickets that are susceptible to fire and disease. And they may look pretty, um, but they're not stable and, and not ecologically functioning. And uh, we're, we're abusing our mountains and our forests every bit as bad as we're abusing our, our lowlands and our cultivated lands. Um, Bill Molson likes to point out that putting your house on top of a hill, no matter how much money you have, is a really stupid idea. Because not only do you have to maintain a constantly road all the way to the top, you've got to pump water up from the bottom. You deforest the hillside, you get less rain in the valley. Um, top of the hill is, is also a uh, prime spot for fire danger, because fire, heat goes up. If that forest is on fire, it's, those people would torch. Um, and then we can also be too low. We can be too close to the, to the water. Um, probably not a good idea for a mill to be right on the water. Um, and then we need mega dams to generate the electricity to power all this stuff. And, and that causes problems with, with uh, nutrient flows. We can't get salmon up the river to, to bring back in all that phosphorus that used to make this land fertile. Um, now we've got to mine fertility from other parts of the world and hauling it on the road system. So it's a mess. Um, a lot of people will look at this and not realize that it's a mess, though. Um, this is Spokane. You know, this is the Colville Valley, this is Lewiston, wherever. Uh, I want to want to move through these really quick. Um, these are some of the consequences of this disintegrated system, this, this economic system. Um, it's kind of the antithesis of habitat. This is a photograph I took myself at the Milner Dam, which is outside uh, I think it's Twin Falls in Idaho. Um, there's a dam here. The Snake River runs this way. Um, it's dammed and diverted into two canals of this size. The reason I went here is because I read that there were times in the year the Snake River ran completely dry here, that all of its water was diverted to canals for 
you know, irrigated potatoes and hay. Alfalfa. Um, I could leap across the Snake River right here. We're talking about the river that drains the Tetons. We're talking about the largest tributary of the Columbia River. Um, you know, you can read the other facts yourselves. The Columbia is the most heavily dammed watershed on the planet. And uh, we're looking at building more. You guys familiar with any of these sites? Hot Creek is not too far from here. They want to dam that whole canyon and store extra water to meet the needs of the farmers and fish because we're running out of water full. Crab Creek. Crab Creek. That's pretty near and dear to me. I don't hate to see that very flooded. This Shaker's Bend, they actually shot that one down. People up by Palmer Lake. Um, that one's no longer on the table. But our tax money has is, is, is been going to research stuff like that. Cloud under. So you guys know that, that soil loss from blue sweet fields is measured in tons. Tons per acre. Yeah, that's unfathomable. And you can see it from the air, you can see it on the ground. Anywhere you see these little rivulets, that's soil being lost to water erosion. Water erosion is, is the biggest problem in our area, but we also lose some soil to wind erosion. Uh, we get, have any of you ever been in one of these dust storms? I, I was in Moses Lake for this dust storm, and you can see that little dark spot, that wiggly line there, that's Moses Lake. Uh, this dust storm can be seen from space, and it's because there isn't any perennial vegetation cover on the land. It's, it's, it's dry land, wheat, it's irrigated farming, and uh, it's a heck of a lot of dirt. And, uh, you know, if I live eastward, I'd want to plant me a forest to kind of settle out some of that good dirt, except that maybe it's polluted by chemicals. And ecosystems have taken huge hits in farming. The Palouse is all used up. We don't know what the Palouse looked like before wheat farming. Um, a few black and white pictures. Maybe the system's totally gone. Um, and you know, maybe maybe that would be worth it from some points of view uh, if, if it were really doing a good job, if it were really giving us a good bang for a buck, but it's not. Our food system uses 10 calories of fossil fuel to produce one calorie of food. All the tractors were running, all the nitrogen fertilizer we're pulling out of, we're pulling out of natural gas. Um, we need 500 gallons of oil per year if we uh, do that math. I read a great paper that it's titled The Anthropogenic Greenhouse Era Began Thousands of Years Ago. We're used to thinking of our cars and coal plants as being the cause of global warming. Actually, climatologists have, have gone back and, and done the science and have found out that the climate started warming as soon as people started farming. And they've, they've got records of, of you know, Britain you know, being like less than 5% forest. Like, it was all used. It was all till. And, you know, I've, I've been, I've had this reemphasized to me uh, how important soil carbon is and how much carbon the soil can store if we keep it green on top. And it, land clearing, you know, forest clearing, flower culture continues to contribute to greenhouse gases today. I don't know how it ranks, but it's just one of the major contributors. Uh, here's some information on pesticides in schools. I keep data on this in Washington Department of Health. It's pretty sad. Um, those of you who, who lived here long enough and fish uh, know that in many bodies of water, and and there, there, are, there are trace levels of this stuff in, in most bodies of water in the state, uh, things like PCB, Lake Roosevelt, uh, Spokane River. Don't eat the fish out of there. I mean, the, the government has allowable limits for how many fish you can eat. That's going to save our water. 
You guys know there's a uranium mine on the Spokane Indian Reservation, just a few miles north here. Um, it's, it's made an entire watershed radioactive. You can't eat the deer, you can't eat the berries. Um, Spokane's pretty pissed about that. Uh, and then another big nuclear site in Washington is Hanford, uh, north of the Tri-Cities. Um, they've got They've got storage for their waste products, but they, they already know that they're leaking. And Hanford is, is right on the Columbia River. Um, in fact, the Hanford Reach is the only stretch of the Columbia River that is free flowing. So I have lots of arguments with my forestry friends about the idea of sustainable forestry. You know, we all know that if we go into a forest and whack down the trees, they'll grow back. Uh, the question is, are we losing the ability of the trees to grow back? And, and we can reduce the fertility of, of the forest by taking the trees. And, and the best way to understand this is to look at your campfire. This is wood ash. Um, so you're, you're burning down your wood. It, it, Turns into these black chunky bits, it's charcoal, it's mostly carbon, um, all the water and volatile oils and stuff burned off. And then when the, when the carbon is burned away, what you're left with is ash. And ash is minerals. It's minerals that, that the tree extracted from the soil to, to use for its life processes. So that's things like calcium, it's, it's things like potash. Every time you take a piece of wood from a landscape, you're taking minerals, you're taking fertility. And you know, if you have a garden, if you dump that wood ash on your garden, your plants are gonna, your plants are gonna do really well because that's the fertile part of the soil. So, we need to do the math on that. And, and taking the minerals away is essentially mining our forests. And mining is, is as we know, not a renewable resource. And there's other ways that this chart shows that, that logging can reduce the fertility of the forest. Um, how long can we do it? I don't know. I think there might be sustainable ways to do it. I don't think that, uh, that we're very certain that our way is sustainable. 